Hi, this is Mike Torsha, and welcome to Live Well and Thrive. I have a very special guest, Paula. Is it Pauline? It's Paula Pauline. It is confusing, but yeah, that's my name. <laughs> now, do you have a nickname? Pao. Pao? Mm -hmm. Okay, right, cool. Yeah. So you are so talented. I mean, I've been reading your bio, and it's so very impressive. So I know that you act, and that you produce, and that you write, and you have your own podcast, correct? Yes, Am I missing something else? <laughs> so I, uh, well, first of all, I'm Mexican Colombian. I'm super proud to be Latin in the United States. I moved here by myself. I'm so happy to represent Latin culture in the entertainment industry. I'm delighted to be here today. So thank you so much for the invitation. We have plenty of friends in common that I love in the industry as well. I think the main thing definitely is acting, is a passion what I see in this country far away from my family. Then I'll say producing because I love creating things. I used to have a podcast with Podcast One as well. It was more the, during pandemic, but now that things came back to like the normal flow of life, it was a little bit hard to have so much on my plate, but I enjoyed the experience of having a podcast so much because I think when you have journeys to inspire others, just like you do, it's just worth it to do it. This is like one big family, yeah. you know, um, you know, Rob Ellen and his partner, Josh, I mean, just the way they run this operation is incredible. And as you can see, this is a beautiful studio and the producers here that do the podcast yeah. are just amazing to work with. You know? Yes. And um, so when I come in here, I don't feel like it's like a work thing. Yeah. It's just hanging out with some friends and doing some cool shit, right? I know. <laughs> and I know. Uh, so I like the podcast because it's called Live Well and Thrive. But we're not boxed in to be a fitness show. It's about anything that has to do with thriving in life. Mm -hmm. uh, Frances Fisher, who was just on before you, shared her journey. She talked about how she first got started in acting mm. and how it evolved to where she is today mm -hmm. and how she fights for the rights of other actors. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you something. She, we've been friends probably 30 years, mm -hmm. and she's been such a dear, dear close friend. And... I was so proud of her when I see her on the news out there picketing yeah. in that hot weather, mm -hmm. you know, and fighting for the rights of all the actors. And it just made me proud. And to see her today talk about three movies she just finished. She's working on another movie. I mean, the woman doesn't stop. She's like a dynamo. Mm -hmm. And so I want to know, like, how you got started. Mm -hmm. Was it when you're a little girl, were you watching movies with your family? Mm -hmm. or, or was there some specific situation that... Yeah made you go, I want to be an actress? Yeah. So what was that? So for me, that's such an excellent question. I grew up, so I was born in Mexico and I grew up in Colombia. And it's Latin culture. And I was raised by a doctor's family and it was really strict. And women had this, like at least in my family, they raised me to be really feminine, well-behaved and certain, like always saying the right things. And I hated it. I was like, I want to be free. I want to be passionate. I want to just do whatever I feel like doing without hurting anybody else, of course. And I remember when I first saw Catwoman, that was what made it for me. When I saw Halle Berry playing Catwoman and I said, oh God, what is that? And I was just a girl, like I was like seven years old. And I went to my mom and I said, mom, you see that character? Like, it's just like a cat, but she's a woman and she's so empowered and so free and so passionate. And she's like, yeah, Catwoman. And I'm like, well, I want to be Catwoman. And she's like, right, you got to be an actress. It's not like you can just be Catwoman in real life. And I'm, why not? It's like, no, it's just a role. It's like, like, how do I say this? Like, it's a cartoon, you know? And I'm like, mom. And that was the moment when I was like, I want to be an actress. I want to be able to experience life in a deeper level. I'm a Scorpio for whoever believes in astrology. I'm like just such a passionate person. But that was not like allowed in my house because I was in a doctor's family. So my journey started completely different than any other actor or producer out there. Um, I studied business and I graduated from business and I specialized in marketing in Colombia. And then I moved to Miami to work for the Colombian government on the investment department. So I was a diplomatic. That was the first thing I did. And deep down, I always wanted to be an actress. And then after a year working there, and I enjoyed my experience working there, they know I deeply love them. They taught me a lot about business, which nowadays I use on my producing side. I was like, I want to be an actress. And I quit that job, which was like such a milestone for my family. And they stopped talking to me. 
<laughs> and I was in another country by myself. I figured that's what was going to happen. Yeah. I know, right? Does yeah. it happen to 99.9% .9 of the actors? My, my, my family was so against me being a bodybuilder. And it, it was, I had to do it myself. You know, and I moved out of my house and trained and uh, had a studio apartment. But my father thought I was going to be nothing but a gym bum. <laughs> so I was going to, I'm going to show him. <laughs> and I did. But I know what you felt. Yeah. Especially, I mean, your parents being doctors. Yes. Do you want to be a what? A what? We br you went to school and you want to be now a... We a, paid a, for the best university for you to come with this. <laughs> and then I moved to Miami. So I'm living in another country by myself. I'm like 20 years old. <laughs> and I'm a diplomatic and they're so happy. Like I was literally like, oh, wow. My family was all about me. To overnight being like, oh, she's dead to us. Because you know how yeah. kids are. Like they, they can be yeah. super hard. And I'm an only child. So it's a lot of responsibility on my That's side. That's even worse when you're only I child. Know. Wow. <laughs> I know. I was like the diamond. So um, thank God I uh, was strong enough. And as you know, those are the moments that build you. And I was like, well, I am the one who has the power to control my future and my present. And I'm going to work for myself. So I started working with as a model for Elite Models Miami. Shout out to Elite Models Miami. I'm deeply like happy because they like discovered me, made me. Obviously, I booked the jobs that they sent me to. Nobody lasts things for you, as you know, on entertainment. You book auditions. Sure. But it shaped me to be like such a good model before Instagram was a thing, before social media. It was like book, height, sizes, like short hair. Uh, runway walk. So I did like many things like L'Oreal campaigns, Skechers, Runway, Miami Fashion Week. And with that money, I pay for my acting classes. And that's why I think I appreciate it so much because it was the first time I had to pay to, I had to work to pay my studies and it paid off. So I studied for four years. And I think for the people that are first, whoever is listening, that are first starting acting, it's so important to prepare yourself. I know we see people like Leonardo DiCaprio and people that have been doing it forever. And it's like, oh, he's such a natural or this person. But I think the more you can prepare yourself, the better. I personally have been studying acting for like 15 years. I always learn a new method. I always change coaches. I always go through different people. I always explore more and more on how I can grow because, you know, I want to be ready for when the opportunity comes. And that's exciting. Exactly what happened after four years of me putting the hard work and not not auditioning because I wanted to be good. I did an audition for the TV show Ballers. As you know, you're really familiar with everybody there. The Ballers family, uh, for the ones who don't know, is a show that stars uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and it's produced by Mark Wahlberg. I booked it. I booked my first audition. This is when you were in Miami. When I was in Miami. Wow. Yeah. And everybody comes like, oh, you're so lucky. Oh, it's because you're so beautiful. And it's not that. It's like you have to really perfect your craft and think as an artist. That's how it is. Like looks at our secondary connections are secondary. I have no connections. I'm completely self-made. My parents are not in the industry. They're back in Colombia and Mexico. They don't even live here. I've been living by myself. And that's what I love sharing my journey. And thank you again for having me here because I want to inspire anybody like, hey, I'm an immigrant who moved to another country by herself, 19 years old, when technology wasn't even as advanced. There was no Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> and I really. still made it by working hard, going to auditions, trusting the process, trusting my faith, trusting God. And yeah, that's that's how it all well, started. It, it certainly paid off. I mean, Thank so you. ballers and what else have you uh, done? So I did ballers. And then after that, I actually was not done yet with my preparation. I went to New York and I wanted to do theater before I moved to LA and start like other movies and TV shows. So that's like step two. I went to New York and I did some theater. I loved that I did uh, different techniques uh, for the ones who want to hear more about this. I studied Uta Hagen, which is a technique, uh, is a woman, right? It's her technique. And then Kate Blanchett did this technique, uh, Denzel Washington. So that's my favorite. I did that for four years. And then I moved to New York and I did Meissner and I did all kinds of like wow. Strasbourg. And I was there for a solid like year and a half. The cold weather was the biggest test because I'm Latina. So that was something. <laughs> that was something. Which weather is your favorite? Uh, me too. I love LA. You okay. love LA weather. But I don't visit New York in the wintertime. Oh, God. I, I go like, I'll go around May or June because it's not too hot. Or I go in September. When yeah. It's, like my birthday's in September. So I like to visit uh -huh. in September. And it's just beautiful. The, the leaves are turning and yeah. the trees. Yeah. It's so nice. A little cooler, but not too hot. Not too hot. But um, the cold weather 
was it for me? That was probably the biggest test. Forget why my parents stopped talking to me. Like supporting the New York, uh, surviving the New York cold weather. But yeah. But you know, fashion, so, the streets are alive at yeah. night. You can go out to dinner at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. And there's fun places to go if you want to keep going and have yeah. fun, you know? Yeah. There's the museums and the art galleries and there's so much things to do there. Yeah. So it's fun. So I do trips to New York. No, absolutely. You know? And I do feel it's a city that inspires you. Like you go for a, for a walk and you see the buildings and you're like- Central life. Park too, just getting out there, you know? Yeah. So I go there every few months just to kind of recharge and come back out here. Yeah. But growing up in New York, I'm a very aggressive person. Yeah. I'm Italian, I'm New Yorker. I go after what I want. If mm -hmm. I see something I want to do, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I make it happen one way or another. Yeah. I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. So that's what made me become successful out here yeah. was if I say to someone, let's do lunch, I'm also going to say, so how's next Wednesday at one o'clock? Or I'll, I'll not say, I'll call you. No, let's figure it out right now. Yeah. Because when I say let's do lunch, I mean let's do lunch. Yeah. It's not that talk to say, yeah, let's do it for lip service because don't say it if you don't mean it. Yeah, I know. It's and, raining. You know, that's the problem I'm here the in LA. Way. Yeah. You know, and at least in like in New York, if someone likes you, you know it. And if they don't like you, you definitely know it. <laughs> but out here, they can say, oh my God, you look so great. Oh, your hair looks so beautiful. Yeah. And all of a sudden you turn around, God, but did you see her ass? Yeah. The junk in the trunk. You, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like they make up this stuff. Yeah. And it's like, why? Yeah. Why do you do that? Yeah. If you don't like me, don't talk to me. Yeah. Don't say hello to me. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because that's who I am. If I don't like a person, I'm not talking to them. Yeah. I'm just I, saying, hey. I feel that's a lighting thing too. And that's the one thing I kind of like felt really good in New York. I was like, oh, this is so much like my culture. Like I agree with you on that. We're so straight up. I mean, Colombia. <clears throat> yeah. Well, so. so uh, bringing up Colombia, um, Pablo Escobar's son, Sebastian, yeah. is a friend of mine. We've been friends for like seven years. Oh, no way. Yeah. So I'm actually working on a documentary mm. um, based on his book. But part of his journey is that he's now right in, now in Mexico. He's working with this uh, virtual world company where they put these uh, kind of these um, glasses on where kids can see two roads. One is down the path, joining, joining a gang and doing drugs. The other one is going to school, have forming a career. And it shows you it, it, how you're, you take path one or path two. And it shows them what happens to the life at the very end, which shows prison or death or whatever. And he's helped over 250,000 kids. And so I'm going to do this docu-series which talks about why he's doing it, how he made amends with all the families that his father brutally murdered and did terrible things, and how he's making up for the sins of his father and his journey full spectrum to now I'm working on getting him to come into the States so he can now share this program. Mm. Because he said, Mike, these people idolize my father as a god. I worship your father. I want to be like your father. And he goes, you don't want to be like my no. father. He's really, he's a very good speaker. So I want to do a docu-series to, for him to do what he's doing, but here, so I'm working with Homeland Security to allow him to come because they're not allowing him to come. So I'm mm. working on that because I have contacts with Homeland Security. But we are going to start filming it in Mexico. So maybe if you want, we can get you involved in that. Absolutely. Be really, really, He's really doing great things for the community, for all these kids. And it's mainly teens and tweens when they're first forming their their personalities and their their just decisions for what they want to do with their life. Yeah. So, and he's doing such wonderful thing. And I endorse that. I believe in him. And that's the only reason why I'm going to work with him to do that. But he also wants me to go to Colombia and visit Colombia. And I said, I will with you. You know, I yeah. wanted to show my appreciation. Well, I have great friends in the Colombian government too. So I can always extend that help too. And I cool. think that's fantastic. And redemption is where it's at. And it's beautiful that he is taking that path. And I think one of my biggest purposes is also change the narrative that people have of Colombia, especially when I use it. It's so true. Colombia I hear it's government. so beautiful there. It's beautiful. Women are so powerful. My mom is a doctor. I was a diplomatic. I'm also a businesswoman. And I still to this day, Day, uh, I mean, you guys cannot see me, but when you're attractive and young and Colombian, it's like, oh, are you really a, the owner of a production company? Oh, oh, wow. 
And I want to delete that. I don't want the new generations carrying that. Like it's not, yeah. it's not fair. It's not fair because Colombian are really hardworking people. There is a lot of talent. There is a lot of beautiful places there. So I'm so happy you are having like a part of changing this narrative. And I'm super happy. I would love to be part of that too. Yeah, I want to bring good people in good that people. are passionate about because I want to work with passionate people, people yeah. that want to make a change. They're not doing it because they're getting paid a certain amount. They're doing it because they want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And there's difference in your performance. When you do something for passion, for love, Yeah, it's, it's more so powerful, different. right? Yeah, yeah. It has. We always have to add a little bit of a give back on anything we do. And I think that's the whole sole purpose of... Uh, of, on what we do, especially in entertainment, that it can be a little bit like vanity and shallow when we attach yeah. it to something more meaningful, then it's different. And I think that will be like my fuel that has been my fuel for all these years being here by myself or away from my family is the number one question I always get. Like, how do you do it? It's been like, it's been like 15 years away from home, 15 years away from my family. Well, that's a lot of work. Yeah, It's a lot of work, yeah. but like once you're inspired and excited and um, yeah, just to continue with the story. When I moved from New York to LA, the first time I didn't know what I was going to get. I always wanted to live in Hollywood. It was finally my dream come true. And I must say that I actually had a great experience. I did Baller season three. I reconnected with the Baller's family. Then I did a movie with uh, David Ayer, who shout out to David Ayer for the ones who don't know. He's a great, great director. He did Suicide Squad and he actually directed me on Spanish. David, you should be really proud of your Spanish. He is so fantastic. Such a big support of Latin community. Shia LaBeouf uh, was uh, on that movie as well. I had a good experience with him on set. And then after that, I think after meeting people like The Rock and Mark Wahlberg that are so inspiring and knowing that they do producing was my first curiosity of like, you know what, maybe I should start producing. And I, I used to see like, you know, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon and all these people that are so inspiring when it comes to like creativity and business. So I started my own production company. It's called Paula Pauli Ventures. I have my own LLC. It's just me. And I've done so far three movies. I have some other ones like on the works. My Anything that's out right now? Yes, please. Uh, oh, the first wait. one is called The Birthday Cake. You're going to love that one. We did it in New York. The lead of that is uh, Ian McGregor. William Fitchner is on wow. it. Ben Batchley from the show You. We have a crazy cast. And then Jeremy Allen White, who just got the Golden Globe. And now he's like you know, on fire, which I'm super happy for That's that. Fantastic. And then I did another one. That one is more like a love story. It's called On Our Way. That one is out as well. Is it on, on streaming platforms? Where yes, on Apple. Apple. All TV. of those on Apple? Okay, yeah. I'll look for it. And then uh, I have another one that I cannot mention the title yet because it's like on post-production, but it's coming out soon. And this is the funny part, and I want every actor to know this. I used to go to an audition. Oh, get super nervous. Then the callback. And then it's like, okay, this is it. If I book it, great. And it's like every actor has ever, like gone through this. When I started producing, I completely let it go. And I was like, you know, if auditions come, they come. If I book, I book. I'm like busy with producing. I'm so happy putting teams to work together. And then I started booking like crazy. And <laughs> I have other two movies coming out as an actress this year. Amazing. It's crazy when you let go. I know this podcast is a lot about that. And like the magic of letting go, how much it brings you. And I know it's easier said than done. And our ego always gets in the way and the controlling power. But I completely was like so focused on acting. And then I started to get direct bookings. I have a movie that is a huge franchise. It's going to come out this year. I cannot mention the title yet or too much about it. The only thing I can mention is I play a police officer. Her name is Alexandra. And she. Uh, this is a true story that happened in Tijuana, Mexico. And she is a Mexican police officer. And I did all my stunts, which is like a dream come true after seeing Catwoman. And it was like a Tomb Raider and I got to be a badass. I got to shoot in San Diego, Rosario, Tijuana. It was super safe to shoot there. I had a great experience there. And then I had another one that I did in New York, in Albany, my first time there. I had a great time. That one we did last year and it's going to be coming out this year as well. And in that one, I played a paramedic. So it was amazing because you know how my family are doctors. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And I was like, I'm a doctor now. Uh -huh. Who's your daddy now, mom? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> She's right? like, okay. 
So yeah, that's basically a little bit of the highlights. highlights. Are you are you writing also or just the, doing the producing? I do mostly the producing. I enjoy doing executive producing. So for the ones who don't know well or are not in the industry, I'm going to break it down. I am an executive producer, which means I bring equity. I bring the money to the films and I help TV shows to get developed or get with a studio, or I attach uh, the director or the cast. So executive, right? So it's the person that basically makes the phone calls, the connections. That's where I come from, from the business world. That's my, I was just a natural connector. It's who I am. I'm really honest. And I think that will be my number one tip when it comes to sales and producing is just as honest as you can be, the better. I think there are certain beliefs around sales that you have to like BS a little bit or like oversell it and be like, you know, oh, this red shirt, you need to buy it. This is the best red shirt you ever found in your life. And it's like this anxiety around it. And then the person that's going to buy it is like, okay. But if you say, hey, man, listen, I think this is a great red shirt. I know there are a lot of red shirts out there. I like this one because this and that, but I, you know, it's your choice. It's going to be here for a week. Let me know. And it always works. Soft touch is always soft touch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So So I like your style too. And I like how diverse you are with everything and how you've really laid out your journey, which is really beautiful because there's going to be a lot of young men and women that are going to be inspired by what you've done. And I'm sure a lot of them have parents that are not supportive, Yeah, you know, and that's okay. Yeah. Because sometimes that's your driving force. Yeah. You know, and uh, the fact that you're now... Taking a whole nother level because you have this production company and you want to do so much. That's great because when you're passionate, that's the most important ingredient. Yeah. You know, yeah. talent, of course, is important, but passion, I think, is the driving force to be successful. Yeah. There is a film that um, there was a script written on a best selling book called The Cop and the Stalker. There is the movie's about this cop that was set up by the Lucchese family. It's a true story. And he basically got fired. But before he got fired, he had a partner that was a boot. You know, that's a rookie. Mm -hmm. And the boot description of the character is you. It's so crazy. And um, I thought, I'm now that I'm thinking, I'm going to talk to uh, my colleague about maybe having you read the script because Mm -hmm. I think you'd be perfect because that's the the, that's the female lead. Yeah, is is the because. Throughout the whole time, it's his partner that helps save his life at the end. Mm. And it's based on a true story. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy's name is Vinnie Davis. You can Google it. And yeah. he went through a lot of things. And it's so funny is the the guy who set him up, uh, who was a cop of the Lucchese family, I know him. Mm. And so what was crazy when he brought me the story is I go, there was a shootout in the China Club. And I said, wait a minute, I read your book and you had to shoot out in the China Club. He goes, yeah, uh, uh, Larry was in the China Club and uh, he was with this bodybuilder and there were some girls and then they got into argument. I go, what did the guy look like? He goes, well, he's tan. And now, this, the guy never met me. Mm-hmm. He was just a, a co- ex-cop on the, on the phone. I said, well, that was me. <laughs> so I was in the shootout. Wow. When, because they got into argument, what happened was the China Club was the hot club in New York City. Monday nights after midnight, everybody was there. Mm. All the strippers took off from the club, so they'd come in. All the rockers, all the Hells Angels would come, everybody would come in. That's night. So I went with my buddy Larry, and, I, and he, he said, Mikey, I got some girls coming from Crazy Horse, let's have some fun. I said, All right, I'll meet you at the club at midnight. So I would get there at the midnight. And, uh, Larry goes, oh, yeah, let's sit over there. I go, no, 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 no. No, we can't sit there. That's the, the boy's table. He goes, not anymore. Takes the card and tosses it. Now, my buddy, Paulie Herman, who passed away, he, he was he's one of De Niro's closest friends. He ran Ago, and he was a really great guy. He's like, guys, you know, this is the family's table. So my guy, Larry, goes, you know who my father is? No. He goes, yeah, I know. But he goes, I don't care if you're capo. This is not good. He said, Paulie, get lost. I'll handle it. So now I'm sitting at the table going, Larry, what are we going to do? He opens up his jacket and he's got a nine mil. I said, Larry, what do you think you're going to do in here? We're here to have fun. What are you bringing it going? He goes, eh, you never know sometimes because in, no, I'm, 
with the family they want to test me out. I said, well, no, there's none of that shit. They got some beautiful girls coming. We're going to have a good time. Now let's get the hell out of here. So sure enough, this little guy looks like Danny DeVito comes over. And then this real big goon comes over. And, and he goes, uh, boys, you're going to have to get off this table. It's not yours. It's our table. And I said, I'm like, and, and Larry goes like this. Nah, we're not going anywhere. So sure enough, he goes, no, nah, I don't think that's a good idea. So sure enough, right away, the, the tall guy, just because he's my guy, Larry, like lean forward, hits him. And then his, his tooth got chipped. And he goes, you son of a bitch. So then I go, oh, no, here he goes. And the guy sees him pulling the nine millimeter out. This big guy, and it had these narrow stairs, was running like a little bitch up the stairs. Like, ah! You know, it was so funny watching the little guy's going, like this, right? Because he thinks he's gonna get shot. So of course, Larry's shooting. I said, Larry, what the fuck are you doing? He goes, I'm just shooting up, scaring him. I go, what are you shooting the club, in the club for? So he's like running up the stairs after the guy and the guy didn't, he didn't hit him, just scaring him, right? Because you know, these guys, they're the cop, they think they're above the law. So all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, shit, Paul, he goes, Mike, go out the back door, get out of here, whatever. So of course, when he was out there running, my my pal Bo Dito, who was in Wolf of Wall Street and Goodfellas and all that, he's a friend of mine. He's a New York City detective. He was on his way over to meet us because I said, "Hey, we got some hot girls coming." So Bo is coming. So when Jerry's run out on the on the sidewalk, Bo sees him with a gun. So my buddy Bo tackles him, but doesn't know that's Larry who I'm with. Oh my god! Cuffs him, arrests him. So then, um, I just go home, and then the next day I get a call from Bo. He goes, "Mike." What happened last night? He goes, you know, I caught this idiot in the street with a gun. And then they told me he was with some big bodybuilder and the guy was scrambling, picking up the the casings from the bullets. You wouldn't have to know who that is, right? I go, right. Okay, because I was wondering if we have a case in there, threw him in the the, the sewer. (laughs) You know? So sure enough, he had to go do a sit down. He, my friend Bo was a very powerful detective. He actually got him out of jail, and they gave him the gun back. <laughs> but, you know, it's from the case. So anyway, so fast forward back to this guy who calls me up out of the blue because he knows I have a production company, comes to me to make the movie, and I'm part of the movie. <laughs> so see what I'm saying? Like the universe brings people together. But you, as you were talking, I was envisioning you as the the rookie cop. Yeah. That's as a badass. Now, do you do martial arts? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Shout out to Arnold Chung. Who okay. also trains Rob. He's cool. great. He, so, he trained me. Oh, yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to talk to him about having you read for that um, role because it's the lead, the female lead. Absolutely. I would love that. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is awesome, man. Yeah. Really. How they say in LA, I will embody that. <laughs> See that right on camera? You're seeing a young lady get an opportunity from just coming in for doing something kind to come on as my guest to share your story and see how the universe reciprocates. Yes, it's thank you so much. I feel honored. Listen, my pleasure. I wanna thank you for coming on and in sharing your story and inspiring others because you inspired me just listening. You remind me of a younger me when I was first starting out yeah. and my family was so against it, you know what I mean? I know. But it's so worth it because then you you soar and they're proud of you and yeah. all that put behind you, you know? Yeah, and I think I also want to leave the message if your parents are against you. They're not really against you. They just don't know any better and that's their way of protecting you and their survival mode of like, I want you to do good. Of course they want to see us succeed. Of course they want to see us happy and they're just trying to protect us just how, like when you were playing when you were little, it's like, watch out, you're going to hurt yeah, yourself. Yeah, no, it's so true. But as an adult, an adult can be at 20 years old, as an adult is a person that makes their own decisions and, you know, you pay your own bills too so you can be an adult is uh, being like you know what I'm I'm open to hurt myself and then stand up again or hurt myself again and stand up again because that's what success is is many times fail and fail and fail until you win there is no it, first win you're, you're so right because you have to fail to succeed it's the only way to learn and the more we open ourselves to it's okay to fail the more we win because it's almost like you take the jump. So thank you so much. And like, Welcome. it's been a great experience. So I'm excited that something good comes out of it. And I see a lot of myself in you as well. <laughs> He's a total method actor at this point. He's a method actor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Live Well and Thrive. And please remember to subscribe. We need your support.
Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching this episode. Got great news. The merch is ready. You're going to see an array of all kinds of great products. Go to operationfitness.com. If you want to order anything, click on my store. Thanks for your support.